I want to show a technique called floating wheels. And this refers to the fact that the wheels in a safe lock do not just rotate, but they also shift. They translate up, down, left, and right. That's due to the fact that the hole in the center of each wheel is a little oversized for the post it sits on. So there's some gap. And when you spin a circle by a single point, which is what happens in the lock, the drive cam, the drive pin will engage the fly of wheel three through just that single point and rotate it. Wheel three has a drive pin that will engage the fly on wheel two at a single point and so on. And so when you spin a circle that way, it will want to translate and move um, since you're using just a single point. This is an example of, let's say, a center post. There is an exaggerated amount of gap here. Um, but if I were to try to spin the wheel through that fly, you will see that the wheel spins, but it also moves in the direction that I am pushing. And that is what's happening in the lock. The wheels are literally moving up, down, left, and right as you spin them. And here I'll show the wheels moving. Uh, and you can see that the drive pin is going down on this lock and the wheel is shifting down once it gets picked up. Uh, you can literally see if you look at the top of the wheel, it is moving further from the fence. If we know where the drive pin is on the drive cam and the flies and drive pin on the wheels, and we also know the position of the fence, we can move two wheels away from the fence, literally creating a bigger gap between the fence and those wheels. And then the wheel that we're isolating, we can isolate it in a way that only moves it towards the fence. So it helps to guarantee a specific wheel to read and it increases the gate signature uh, that you'll, you'll get when you find a gate because the wheels are now at drastically different heights. So when the gate on the wheel that's reading uh, has been put under the fence, you'll have a larger drop for your gate indications. So we can actually know where the drive pins are on the drive cams because it's brand dependent. This is an SNG. You can see that the drive pin on the drive cam is pretty much where that right contact point is. So you can see that circle, that's where it is. And on a Lagarde, it's roughly, you add five from the right contact point. And on a Dybul, you want to subtract 32 from the left contact point. And then on a Mosler, you add 50, add or subtract 50. Um, those drive pins are directly opposite of the right contact point. Uh, for a Dybul, you, you go off of the left contact point because it's a little more sloped than the right on that specific brand. Um, and so I have a graph paper that shows the offset of the drive pin from the contact point. Now, to know where the fence is, we can actually find the mounting orientation of the lock using this technique. And so the way that this is done is you can move all the wheels away from the four possible fence locations and you can examine your contact points then. So I have instructions here. So we want to assume the lock is right hand uh, mounted and dialing this sequence, we'll move all the wheels away from the fence if it was right hand mounted. So in that case, this is right hand mounted and so the fence is above the wheels. And it says wheel one, you park left at the drive pin plus 25. So my contact point here, my right contact point is 40. It's an SNG, so my drive pin is also at 40. And if I were to add 25, that's 65. So when I'm turning left and I reach 65, my drive pin's at 40. And so it is literally moving down. And so if the fence is above the wheels, it would be moving wheel one literally away from the fence. Now, the thing about the wheels are the flies are exactly opposite of the dry pins underneath. And so if one wheel is moving up or down, the next wheel is opposite. So if your dry pin is moving down, then wheel three will be moving with it and will also be going down. But wheel two will be moving up and then wheel one is going down. So here we have put wheel one going down, the dry pin literally going down. And then we're going to turn right, pick up wheel three, 
and then pick up wheel two. And we're only going to shift it about five increments. And that's because our drive pin, now it's moving up since we're turning right, it's moving up. And so wheel three is going up and that means wheel two is going down because the drive pin on wheel three is opposite the fly. So you reverse the direction. And then you turn left, pick up wheel three, put it on 65. So our drive pin is going down again. So all three wheels have been set in a way that moves them further from the fence if this was right hand mounted. And then we simply take a contact point reading. And so I did that for each of the four possible mounting orientations. Um, you can see it shifts by 25 each time. And that's because in this case, we dialed it in such a way, assuming that the fence was above. If the fence was to the left, then instead of going to 65, where it's moving the wheels down, we want to go 25 numbers more to 95. And now that will, or 90, sorry. And now the wheels will be moving to the right because that drive pin is going to the right. And so if the lock was mounted where the fence was above or to the left of the wheels, but we turn it so it's above, that is going down. That's away from the fence. So we get our four contact point readings and we should know that if the lock is right hand versus left hand mounted, if you move the wheels away from the fence in a right hand mounted lock, okay, that's the same as moving the wheels towards the fence in a left hand mounted lock. So if the mounting orientation of the lock is one of those two, you'll see a larger difference between those two contact point readings than you will with the other pair of readings, the vertical down and vertical up. So we want to find our pair of contact point readings with the greatest distance between right hand, left hand, and vertical down, vertical up. So in my case, I have 13 and a quarter as my contact point reading in each situation, except for left hand, I had 13 and a half. So the difference between VD and VU is zero. And the difference between RH and LH is a quarter of an increment. So we know that our mounting orientation will be one of those two. And we take the smallest of those readings because again, we're moving the wheels away from the fence. So whatever mounting orientation the lock is in will give a smaller contact point reading. And so that tells us that this lock is right hand mounted and that the fence is above the wheels. Okay, now for isolating, you can't just park the, the first two wheels away from the fence and then pick up the third wheel and immediately start to, to manipulate. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna park my first two wheels in a way that is away from the fence. And so then since it's right hand mounted, you will be parking your first two wheels at these locations here. So I will turn left, pick up all the wheels, and wheel one will be at left 65, okay, because that puts it away from the fence. I'll pick up wheel three and then pick up wheel two, park it in a way that is away from the fence. And then once I turn left and I pick up wheel three from 60, I can't just start at 62 because the drive pin is going down and we want wheel three to be going up when we manipulate it to create that larger gap, give us bigger gate indications and to guarantee that wheel three is reading first. So what we do here is we look and see which mounting orientation is our lock. In this case, it's right hand and we're isolating wheel three. So wheel three will go left from the drive pin plus 50 to the drive pin. So that is half the dial. And so let me explain that. So what, now that we have wheel three, we go to drive pin plus 50, that, that would be 90. Once we hit 90, that means our drive pin is down here and it's crossing that vertical line. And so it's going from, instead of going down, now that we've hit 90 up here, our drive pin is now going up for half the dial. So that's why you go drive pin plus 50 all the way to drive pin, okay? And so we start from 90, take our contact point readings, go to 92 and all the way until we reach our drive pin at 40. Now, once we have that, then what we do is our next step. We wanna go right from wheel two to drive pin. Wheel two was left at drive pin plus 20, so that's 60. And so in order to go right for that, we can 
turn the dial to go right, pick up wheel three, or sorry, let me, once you do that first section, you can push it all the way to wheel two first. So wheel two was at 60. So you push wheel three all the way to 60 and then you can come around right and then start isolating with a right rotation from 60 down to 40. So you'll hit this section that you've missed. And so that will be moving the drive pin up. Wheel three is gonna be going up for this whole rotation. And then you can do your last quarter of the dial, which would be drive pin plus 50 to wheel two. Okay, so we just did our wheel two to our drive pin. So now we want to do drive pin plus 50 to wheel two. So wheel two was on 60, drive pin plus 50 is 90. So now we just continue turning right until we hit 90 and we take our contact point reading and we just keep going until we reach 60. And that's because our drive pin at 40 will be going up for that duration. So you're splitting the dial into three parts and you're isolating wheels through those areas in a way that only moves them towards the fence. And so these are the three regions and the direction you're going to be isolating your wheels in, in those regions. And I have seen some really huge jumps in the contact point uh, with this method. Um, wheel one uh, will have a bigger indication than wheel two, and wheel two will have a bigger indication than wheel three. I don't know why, but I just see the smallest translation on wheel three, whatever's closest to the drive cam, wheel three, and it increases uh, the further you get. Um, but it saves a lot of time. It cuts down on a lot of the skill needed. You don't have to be as consistent with the contact point readings um, because the indications are so much bigger. I, I've seen nearly a, an entire increment change in the contact point on, on wheel two before uh, through this method.